Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely good evening once again from here in Charlie and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely fine, happy and of course in fine spirits. So today in this particular session, as I promised last time that we are going to take up some questions which in my opinion seem quite important and may help you of course in the upcoming examinations. But prior to that, before we start the what we call this particular series, let me pick up Question number 9 of December 2021 attempt paper. If you remember actually when I did that particular paper, at that time I intentionally left that particular question. Because in my opinion, entire information in the question was not given. And to be very honest with you, it took me a hell of a time to actually find out the complete question. And one of my students then sent me the complete question. I am very thankful to her. Uh, I have forgotten her name, but anyway, so she sent me the complete paper, but prior to that also, I was able to determine the entire length and breadth of that particular question. I will just tell you, I am talking about question number 9. Please open down your December 2021 paper if you are having, even if you are not having, I have written the question here. And um, at that time, I didn't do, you could now understand why, because... It was virtually impossible to determine the what we call exact answer in the absence of what we call some further information which was in the question but somehow the paper but on in the site of the institute that paper was incomplete correct as i told you it took hell of a time and many of you actually never understand this particular things many among you i have seen actually keep on sending the messages please send the solution of this particular question you need to understand actually you are matured enough that it takes hell of a time. If question is come incomplete, we can't do anything. And time and again, I do not want to sound arrogant. But perhaps I am the only faculty who is giving you complete answers to these questions. So you must understand my predicament, my problems and my uh, time factor also because we have to do justice not only to CFR, to FR courses, both in the English version and EU even CFR in the English version courses. Anyway, so these are the points just uh, I just wanted to share with you. We start with question number 9. First of all, December 21, before I come over to the list of the question which I have picked up and I will keep on doing. So question number 9 starts this way round. Bharat Limited obtained 14% loan. This was the question. And further, 14% loan was taken for rupees 120 lakh on 1st of June 2019. Important point here is that you need to note down the date very carefully because generally we have a feeling that loan is generally taken in the beginning. No, it can be taken at any point of time during the entire accounting year. So the loan was taken on 1st of June 2019 to be utilized as follows. So whatever loan which we have taken was utilized in the construction of building out of 120 lakh, 50 lakhs were used in the construction of the building. Quite obviously, we have taken the loan on 1st of, Ju 1st of June 2019. So it can be easily implied that construction of the building must have had begun on 1st of June 2019. Further, one more line is written. So you should not get confusion out of uh, this particular line. The line states that construction of building and in the bracket it is written, work was held up totally for one month during the heavy rains. If you have gone through borrowing cost, even I have explained during my lectures, that if work gets suspended due to some natural phenomena, in that case, the capitalization of interest will never stop. The capitalization of interest will uh, continue. Correct? So this particular line is not going to impact the calculation with respect to the capitalization of interest or for that instance, what we call any other factor. Is it clear to you or not? Because here the work has been held for one month during the year due to heavy rains. So, Heavy rains are natural phenomena, so we may presume that way round. So we will keep on what we call even uh, capitalizing their interest even in this particular period. Further, we purchased a machinery for rupees 40 lakhs. Working cap we used out of 120 lakh of loan, 20 lakh we kept it as working capital. And 10 lakh worth of loan out of 120 lakh we used in giving advance for purchase of a truck. And remember one thing, advance is your current asset. Is it clear to you that been here in case of working capital and advance because they are of current nature, we cannot capitalize the interest on the same. You need to understand first of all these things. But before that, construction of the building was completed on 1-8-2020. This is also a very important line which you need to take into account and was put to use on 1-10-2020. Honestly speaking, this line is irrelevant because the moment the asset is going to get completed, 
we will have to seize what we call then capitalizing the interest. Correct? We are not what we call concerned with the fact that when it was put to use, we are more concerned when it was ready to use. We presume that when building was completed, here it is ready to use now. So we will stop what we call now capitalizing the interest from this particular point forward. The next point is that the machine was installed on the same date. Now purchase of machinery. When we purchase the machinery, that means it was ready for use. That is the reason actually why we stalled. So if we have purchased any asset and if it is ready for, as, ready for use, that means it is not a qualifying asset. So honestly speaking, in this particular question, purchase of machinery will not be considered as qualifying asset because as per AS16, you will capitalize the interest only with only in the period in which asset is under qualification stage. We call it qualifying. That means if particular asset is qualifying, that means still it is under construction, it is still it is not ready for use, then during that particular period we've capitalized the interest. However, in this case, machinery is ready for installation. That means this particular machinery is ready for use. So it is not a qualifying asset. It is a qualified asset. It is not a qualifying asset. Because it is not a qualifying asset, any interest related to this particular machinery will not be capitalized. And I have already told you, working capital and advance are of current nature. With respect to current nature items, we never capitalize the interest. So interest related to working capital and interest related to advance will not be capitalized. Is it clear to you? So first of all, actually, we have to take under borrowing cost what we are supposed to do, actually, whatever loan which we have taken whatever loan which we have taken correct first of all we will consider the amount of the loan obviously we will compute the interest on this particular loan correct some interest obviously we must have paid because we have taken a loan we have taken a loan at the rate of 14 percent so whatever interest is there that interest need to be allocated Either that interest will be capitalized or either that interest will be considered as of revenue nature shall be charged to profit and loss account. Out of 120 lakh, I have already told you, we have used 50 lakh in the construction of the building. 40 lakhs we used for purchase of machinery. We kept 20 lakh as working capital and 10 lakh worth of amount. We forwarded it as advanced against the purchase of truck. Now, out of these 120 lakhs, Correct? Obviously, we are paying some interest. So, some interest will be allocated to this portion, some interest will be allocated to this portion, some interest will be allocated to this, and of course, some portion of this particular interest will be allocated to this one also. And since I have already told you that last three items are not qualifying nature, so whatever interest of out of your total interest, whatever proportion of interest is related to these three items, that particular interest will be charged to profit and loss account. No doubt about that. Now, because building is under construction stage, how it is under construction stage, let me tell you also. See here, we have taken the loan. First of all, our current accounting year must have started on 1-4-2019. Because it is given in the question that we took the loan on 1st of June 2019. This is your date of loan. Remember one thing and this date is quite vital. And obviously your first year would end on 31st of 3, 2020. This will be the end of the first year. Isn't it or not? Now, it is clearly mentioned in the question that construction of the building was completed on 1-8-2020. Obviously, the 1st of August 2020 will fall after the end of current accounting year because building was constructed on 1st of August 2020. That means till the end of the first year, I can now say with great surety that this building was under construction. We can say so. Isn't it or not? Are you getting my point or not? What point actually I am trying to put up into your mind? That means... <coughs> First of all, you need to understand that for the year, for this particular accounting year, this is your first year because loan has been taken on 1st of June 2019. You need to compute interest on 120 lakhs at the rate of 14% for this particular period because you have taken the loan of 120 lakh on this date. You have taken the loan of 120 lakh on this particular date. Loan has been taken at the rate of 14%. 
So first of all, you need to compute your total interest which you must have paid or you or which you would pay for this particular phase of period. Quite obviously, if loan has been taken from 1-6-2019, accounting year is actually ending on 31st or 3-2020. Automatically, it means actually, if I am going to compute the period from this day onward, it will amount to dear about 10 months. So that means I will have to compute the interest on 120 lakh at the rate of 14% for 10 months. And this should be my first target. Correct? This should be my first target. This is the interest I am going to compute first of all. Now, second important point means because we are dealing with the first year, that is 1 4 2019 to 31st 3 2020. In this particular period, this much of interest we must have paid. Now, whatever amount of interest which you will get, that interest, now I want to know what proportion of that interest should be capitalized and what proportion of that interest should not be capitalized. Actually, main answer of the question is how much interest should be capitalized. Correct? So, first we are going to compute the interest for the period 1920. Now, in 1920, we can say as we have seen with great surety and certainty that this building till the end of the accounting year was under construction stretch. Do, are you agree with, do you agree with me or not on this particular point? Accounting year is ending here and building got constructed over here. So, it is... It is no logic need to be applied here that till up to this stage, building is, is still under construction stage. If any asset is, is still under construction stage, that is considered as a qualifying asset. Now, if that asset is qualifying asset, quite obviously, you are going to capitalize the interest. So, this is exactly what you are supposed to do. Now, see here, first of all, pay attention. Here I have written interest on borrowing for the period 1-6-2019 till 31st of 3-2020. Correct? I have just told you that we are going to compute interest for this particular period because we took the loan on 1st of June 2019 and first year will end on 31st of 3-2020. My interest will be amount of loan 120 lakhs, rate of interest 14% and the period from June till 31st of March will be equal to 10 months. So, 10 by 12, your interest will be equal to 14 lakhs. Now, on that date when I was solving the paper, December 2021 paper, why I stopped? Because I felt that some information was missing and I was very true. Now, I will tell you what information was missing. Further, it is given that machine was installed on the same date and delivery of the truck was not received. So, did, whether the delivery of the truck is received or not, we are not concerned with that. Important point is that we have paid advance and advance is the current asset. That's the point. Now, here I have written pay attention. Pay attention in the sense means following lines were not given in the question I have mentioned. Following lines were not given in the question means the question paper which we took from what we call the site of the institute in that particular question paper these lines were not missing and these lines are like this so that was the reason during the year 2019 and 20 see here what question is telling the company had invested idle funds out of its bank loan in fixed deposit and had earned an interest of rupees 2 lakh and this particular line will change the complexion of the entire solution. So that was the reason. You must complement it that I was able to actually smack that there was some mistake and something is missing. So now what you need to understand, first of all, at least through this particular chart, 1920, you need to understand that your current accounting year is starting on 1 4 2019. Uh, uh, Loan has been taken on 1st of June. Accounting year is ending on 31st of 3 2020. Don't go for this particular line. I will explain 50% loan repaid. What does it mean? That I will explain later. Important point is that just we went through this particular line that in 2019 and 20, this company. Because we have taken a loan, very heavy loan of 120. Sometimes we take very heavy loan and suddenly we find that some portion of this loan is lying idle. So instead of keeping it with ourselves, what we do, it is better to actually invest it somewhere and earn some interest. That is exactly what this company did. So out of this particular loan, some portion of the loan, we are not concerned with the portion of the loan. Some amount was invested. And till the end of the current year, till the end of 31st, 2020, company got an income of rupees 2 lakh also. 
you got my point or not that been in 19 now what you have to pay attention to that in 1920 you must have paid interest on 120 lakhs at the rate of 14 percent for 10 months that is the total interest which you have paid but as per borrowing cost if you have earned some income then your eligible borrowings what my point is Total interest I have paid 14 lakhs and just a moment ago I told you that we have earned an interest. Interest received on investment of idle fund is equal to 2 lakh. So that means eligible borrowing cost will not be considered as 14 lakh. Rather we have to now see the treatment of 12 lakh. This will be considered as borrowing cost or real interest cost. That means in reality your interest expenses are 12 lakh and not 14 lakh. This is the point which you need to understand. So 14 lakh worth of interest we have paid, correct? Now we can say that on total cost, total cost in the sense means total amount of loan because it will also become the total cost because out of 120 lakh we have spent 50 lakh on building, 40 lakh on purchase of machinery, 20 lakh on what we call working capital, 10 lakh on uh, advance, so total will become 120. So I can say if for 120 lakh total net interest is 12 lakh, then how, then what proportion of the interest will relate to 50 lakh? 50 lakh is the cost of the building. So you can easily find out in this manner 50 into 12 divided by 120. 120 is the total cost and the proportion of the cost of the building is 50. Total interest is 12 lakh. Now, if you are going to compute this interest, this portion of interest will be capitalized. Why? Because it is related to building and building is a qualifying asset. So, now you got this particular answer. Qualifying asset as per AS 16 rupees 50 lakhs. Because building is still under construction till 31st of 3, 2020, till the end of the first year. Your accounting year is beginning on 19, 1 4 2019, ending on 31st of 3 2020. So, building was is still under construction, that is why it is a qualifying asset. So, whatever interest related to 1920, now we have just seen that interest related to 1920 is actually 12 lakh and not 14 lakh, correct? So, 12 lakh. So, into 50 divided by 120 lakh, we get 5 lakhs as the amount. So, 5 lakhs of interest will be capitalized. Now, simple task. For other item, you need not require to compute the interest. Reason being is that all other items are not qualifying asset. So, whatever interest is related to those items automatically will be charged to profit and loss account. So, what I can see here, since all the other assets are not qualifying asset, since all the other assets are not qualifying asset, interest related to them shall be debited to profit and loss account. So, interest debited to profit and loss account will be how much? Your total interest for 1920 is 12 lakh as we saw, not 14 lakh, 12 lakh. And out of 14 lakh, 5 lakh has been capitalized. So, 7 lakh will be charged to what we call profit and loss account. So, this is for 1920. But problem is that a story of this particular question is not stopping at this particular point. Following lines were not given in the question out of that two lines I have I have already read. During the year 2019-20 company had invested idle funds uh, out of its loan in the bank's fixed deposit and had earned an income of rupees 2 lakh. Now further, company, further the question says company repaid 50% of its loan on 31st of March 2020. At the end of the first year, now when we reach the end of the first year, see here. I have written here also, when we reach the end of the first year, 50% of the loan has been repaid. 50% loan has been repaid. What does it mean? Your total loan for the period was 120 lakhs. And on this date, if you have repaid 50%, that means at the end of the year, now you are left off with only 60 lakhs worth of money. Is it clear to you? Now you are left off with only 60 lakh worth of loan. So now we move over to the other part of the question. Now your next year, this is your first year. In your second year, which will start from 1-4-2020 and end on 31st of 3-2021. Now we know that in the beginning, I am having only 60 lakh worth of loan. And what does question further states? 
क्वेश्चन फर्दर स्टेट्स दैट कंपनी रीपेड 50 परसेंट ऑफ द लोन ऑन 31 ऑफ मार्च 2020 and the balance now whatever balance loan was there was also repaid on 31st of december 2020 first question states that company repaid 50% of its loan on 31st of march 2020 and now the question is telling that balance on 31st of december 2020 so you need to understand it this way round i told you when second year began we had in our hand only 60 lakhs because out of 120 we have already paid 60 lakh at the end of the last year so quite obviously at the end of the last year or beginning of the next year are one and same so in the beginning i am having 60 lakh worth of money and this 60 lakh was also repaid on 31st of 12 2020 on 31st of 12 2020 this 60 lakh were also repaid what does it mean it means 60 lakh worth of loan was used only in the second year from this particular day till this particular date is it clear to you or not now if i am going to compute the time period for this particular from april uh, from april to 31st of december it will be equal to i think 9 months isn't it or not so what you now need to do is that when you will compute the interest charges for the next year you first of all you will have to compute the interest for 2021 in this manner here i have written interest computation for 2021 now total interest for the period 2021 is and just to remind you i have written over here <coughs> remember <coughs> that company repaid 50% of the loan on 31st of 2020 and balance on 31st of december 2020 that mean in the year 2021 i was having only 60 lakhs so when i will compute the interest it will be equal to 60 lakh into 14% for 9 months correct from 14 2020 beginning of the second year till the repayment of the uh, till the repayment date 31st of 12 2060 so total interest will be equal to 630 that been in second year i have paid an interest of only 6.30 6.30 you need to understand in this manner now my point is out of this interest how i am going to capital how much i am going to capitalized how i am going to capitalized because in the second year building got building also got what we call completed so here since building got completed on 1 8 your amount of loan will be this much out of 630 out of 6.30 into 50 divided by 120 2.625 this much you are going to capitalize so that mean total capitalization will be 5 lakh in the year 1900 and 19 as 2019 and 20 and in second year i am going to capitalize 2.625 so this is our answer and it can be said the answer given in the question is correct correct but you need hell of what we call here analytical power to solve this particular question and i take great pride in what we call solving this particular question i hope that you would at least agree on this particular count so you must understand that it was not easy to decipher uh, in this particular question because in the absence of those lines and even in the presence of those line it is not quite easy to handle but on our part as always we are leaving no stone unturned to give you the best possible what we call teachings <laughs> anyway i hope this much of uh, things i can say correct anyway now we move over to the other part of the session important question series i have picked up this particular question one because i really wanted to pick it up and second because i received request from some quarters to solve this particular question there are at least 7 to 8 requests correct by way of messages messages to solve this particular question that is the reason i am picking up and at the same time i too from my side wanted to pick this particular question <clears throat> honestly speaking there is hardly any difference between as 21 and india's 110 
except for the jargons, except for the jargon. For example, in AS21, generally we use the word holding company and instead of what we call parent. And similarly, with respect to non-controlling interest, which we use under India 110, we under AS21, we use what we call minority interest. As far as accounting treatment is concerned, there is hardly any difference, to be very honest with you. Technically, this question is of AS21. Technically, but you can also say that this question is related to AS 110 also. As I told you, actually, as far as questions are concerned, there is hardly any difference. So, H limited or your parent limited purchased on 31st of 3, 2017. Pay attention, it is not an easy question. It's a very, very tough question. Correct? H limited purchased on 31st of 3, 2017, 40,000 shares in S limited at 50% premium over face value. We purchase 40,000 shares. If I am purchasing 40,000 share, automatically it means the face value of the share is 40,000 into, I do not know the uh, value of the share, value of the share is 10, fortunately it is given. So that is equal to 4 lakh. This is the face value, but question is telling that we purchase 4 lakh worth of share, uh, uh, 40,000 share in S limited at a premium over face value, at 50% premium. That means instead of paying 10, I paid at the rate of this much. So that means 2 lakh more I paid. So total amount paid by us is equal to 6 lakh. We acquired 40,000 shares, no doubt about that. We acquired 40,000 shares of rupees 10 each at the rate of 10. But in order to get these shares, we paid 6 lakh rupees. I'm not telling that we paid the, we paid 6 lakh by issuing shares. In order to get 40,000 shares, we made a payment of 6 lakh. That's the important point. And how we paid it, paid it out. It is written that by by issue of 8% debenture at 20% premium. In order to make a payment of 6 lakh, first of all, one thing is clear that payment was not done in cash. Instead of, make, instead of what we call cash, we decided to make the payment by issue of 8% debentures at 20% premium. Now, the first thing which I need to do in this particular question is to know how many debentures I would issue to make the payment. And it is not a very difficult task. I have to pay 6 lakh rupees. And if I ask you a simple question related to almost class 12th, that you have to make a payment of rupees 6 lakh. And for that, you are issuing debentures at 20% premium. So how will you do? If face value of debenture is not given, debenture is always presumed as having a face value of 100. So that means you will issue debenture at an issue price of 120 because you are issuing the debenture at 20% premium. So if you are going to divide 6 lakh by 120, I think it will be equal to 5,000. 6, la mm -hmm. 6 lakh divided by 5. How much it is? That is equal to 1 lakh 20,000 in my opinion. Oh, sorry, just give me time. 6 lakh divided by 120. I did the mistake. 5,000. So 5,000 shares, 5,000 debentures you are going to issue. 5,000 debentures, of course, of rupees 100 each, you will issue, but you will issue at the rate of rupees 120. So, total 6 lakh worth of debentures you will issue to make the payment. No, no doubt, your consideration amount will be uh, considered as 6 lakh. This is the amount of investment because in order to acquire 40,000 share, you are making a payment of 6 lakh. So, 6 lakh will be considered as the cost of your investment. Against the same, you are getting 40,000 share. That's a different matter. However, to make the payment, you can make the payment in any form, no problem in it. And here you are making the payment in the form of debenture. This is, a, this is the first point which you need to understand. You must have seen the first two lines needed a bit of what we call analysis. Further, it is also given in the question that balance sheet, mm -hmm, Nowadays, this pen has started playing tricks. The balance sheet of H Limited and S Limited on 31st of 3, 2017. I did not cha intentionally change the dates. <clears throat> Question is of 2019. So, balance sheet is given to you 
as on 31st of 3, 2017, this is another area where you need to actually stress upon. Because this question is related to 2019, so quite obviously balance sheet given is in old format. So as far as holding company is concerned, it is having tangible fixed asset and S limited is having this much. Inventories 3 lakh, 1 lakh 80, trade receivables, cash and then pay attention here. Because under old format of balance sheet, debit balance of profit or loss account used to be written as you know towards the asset side. Subsidiary, this is profit and loss account balance of subsidiary company is negative. 20, 80,000 balance and it is negative balance. Now share capital of holding company is this much, of share uh, subsidiary company is this much besides their general reserve. Now profit and loss account of holding company is 80,000. Trade payables are 1 lakh and 60,000. Correct? This is your question. Further, it is given that particulars of H limited. Particulars of holding company is given to you. Most of the times we are not given the particulars of holding company. You must have noticed. But here, question states that profits made during 2017 and 18. 1,60,000 holding company made a profit of 1,60,000 in year 2017 and 18. So your 17, 18 will become first year. 2018 and 19. And in the second year, that means in this question, the time period will play a problematic role. Why it will play a problematic role? Because you acquired the share on 31st of 3, 2017. If we have acquired the share on 31st of 3, 2017, it means our current accounting year will start from 1, 4, 2017. Because next date after 31st of 3, 2017 will be 1, 4, 2017. And our accounting year will end on 31st of 3, 2018, isn't it or not? This will be my first year. And in this year, it is stated that H Limited made a profit of 1,60,000 so far. And further, it is also given that in 2018 and 19, that means we will move over to the next year also, 1 4 2018 and 19. So 1 4 2018 and 19, 31st of 3 2019. In the second year also, H Limited made some profit, no problem. H Limited has made some profit. It is not a big problem. 1,60,000 and 2 lakh worth of profit they made. Just to confuse you, it is written that above profits were after charging depreciation of 60,000 and 40,000. Above profits were after charging. Actually, no treatment is required. We need not require to do any treatment because profits are always computed after charging. Whatever I have written in written in red pen this was not part of the question this is just part of analysis correct so i have just told you that here i have just cautioned you that no treatment is required for this 60 and 40000 because profits are always computed after charging depreciation no problem in it further the next line because all these particulars are related to holding company now third point given is out of profit shown above every year 20000 has been transferred to general reserve and many students, because they are not quite acquainted with such lines, correct? So they sometimes actually wonder what to do. You need not require to do anything, to be very honest with you. All you have to do is, I have written in brackets, simply subtract 20,000 profits earned by H Limited every year. What I mean to say is, when I am going to prepare the consolidated profit and loss account, we prepare CPL, so many times we have prepared, correct? Consolidated profits. In the balance sheet, in the consolidated balance sheets, point here you need to understand now, first of all, before I begin what we call analyzing this item, in this question, your accounting year is starting on 1-4-2017 because we acquired the control on 31st of 3-2017. Remember one thing in accounts, 31st 3-2017 and 1-4-2017 will be considered one and same date. That means in this case, a story is beginning on this date. We acquired the control here and a story is getting completed on 31st of 3, 2019. So in between there are two years and this entire two year period will be considered as post acquisition period. 
this entire two years period will be considered as post acquisition period simply because of the fact that you got the control on this date and period onwards the date of control is considered as post acquisition period so in this question from this particular date till this particular date entire two two years period will be considered as post acquisition period so this should not pose any problem to you number one number two now we come over to that particular point when i will prepare later on consolidated balance sheet on 31st of 3 2019 over there i will write consolidated pnl and in order to what we call prepare the consolidated pnl first of all what we do we write parents profit now parents profit is given to us whatever profit is given in the balance sheet on 31st of 3 2017 this will be considered as opening balance because balance sheet is on 31st of 3 2017 the date on which you acquired the control so this will be considered as opening balance of h limited so i will write 80000 then whatever profit they earned in this year i am going to add it whatever profits they are going to earn in this year i am going to add it and because it is written there every year holding company has transferred 20000 out of their profits to general reserve so i will subtract 20000 once and 20000 second time also total 40,000 I will separate. So this is the only treatment of this particular item which you need to do. Is it clear to you? Further in this question it is stated that 10% dividend has been paid in both the year but this dividend has been paid by holding company. So no special treatment is required. The only treatment required is that whatever dividend has been paid by holding company during these two years will be subtracted from the consolidated profit and loss account which I just told you. First, I will write parent share 80,000. I will add two years profit. I will subtract two years transfer to general reserve 20,000, 20,000. And I, and I will also subtract dividend paid by what we call holding company. Dividend is always computed on the amount of the share capital. Total share capital of holding company is 10 lakh 50,000. You will compute 10% dividend. 10% dividend will be 1 lakh 5,000. So I will subtract 1 lakh 5 and 1 lakh 5 when I will prepare consolidated PNL and I have written here in the balance here in red pen it means H limited has paid dividend pay attention here I have written over here H limited has paid dividend at the rate of 10 lakh 15 to 10 percent 1 lakh 5000 each year so just for your facility I have done the analysis uh, what we call information wise now again this point is also related to H limited because all these particulars are related to H limited and this is the only line which is forcing me to actually solve this question it has been decided to write down investment to the face value of shares in 10 years and to provide for share of loss to the subsidiary it has been decided to write down investment to the face value of shares in 10 years and to provide for the share of loss to the subsidiary company try to understand this particular point and what does it mean first of all in the opening line itself i told you you have acquired how many shares 40000 shares face value of one share was 10 so that is the par value nominal value or face value 4 lakh is the face value but how much amount did you uh, did you pay to get that investment to get 4 lakh worth of share capital you paid 6 lakh now question is telling because you have paid because you have acquired 4 lakh worth of shares only however in order to get 4 lakh worth of share you made a payment of 6 lakh this is your investment question is telling that we want to reduce this investment we want to reduce this investment to the face value that means you want to write off 2 lakh first of all we have to decipher we have to find out how much amount we have to write off so we have to understand it this way it has been decided to write down the investment to the face value of the share in 10 years to write down investment to face value of share so your investment is 6 lakh face value of the share is 4 lakh so you have to write it down to 4 lakh that means you have to write it down by rupees 2 lakh and further the question just to confuse you further states that they want to write it off this much of amount in 10 years so every year how much they are going to write off 20,000 every year we are going to write off how much 20,000 and when I say who will 
हु विल राइट इट ऑफ सब्सिडियरी कंपनी और होल्डिंग कंपनी इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड इट आउट सो सिंपली थिंक ऑफ द फैक्ट हु इज डूइंग द इन्वेस्टमेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट इज डन बाय होल्डिंग कंपनी सो होल्डिंग कंपनी इज गोइंग टू राइट इट ऑफ सो वेन होल्डिंग कंपनी विल कंप्यूट इट्स कंसोलिडेटेड प्रॉफिट There are two, three things holding company will do. Holding company will write the opening balance of its profit and loss account. Whatever profits holding company has earned during these two years, holding company is going to add those profit. Now, whatever amount general it has transferred to general reserve, twenty thousand, twenty thousand, we will subtract. Whatever amount it has paid as dividend will be subtracted, one lakh five thousand, one lakh five thousand. And now, because it will have because here two years period given, so in these. Two in these two years, I will write twenty thousand, twenty thousand. So twenty, twenty thousand will also be subtracted. So this is the meaning of this particular sentence. It means total investment is seven lakh twenty thousand, four lakh in two hundred, four lakh plus fifty percent premium. That is equal to six lakh. I have written total investment seven twenty. Actually, total investment should be six lakh. Correct. And face value of the share is four lakh. So two lakh shall be. Written off over ten years period of time. That means twenty thousand you are going to write off. Is it clear to you or not? So far the information was related to only holding company. Now we come over to particulars of S Limited. Now question states that and question states that company incurred losses of forty thousand and sixty thousand. The subsidiary company has incurred losses of forty thousand and sixty thousand in two thousand seventeen and in two thousand eighteen, after charging depreciation of ten percent of the book value as on one four two thousand seventeen. We are not concerned with that because ultimate results are always after depreciation. So no special treatment of this depreciation. But problem is that subsidiary company has incurred a loss of forty thousand in two thousand seventeen. Uh, in two thousand seventeen eighteen and in two thousand eighteen nineteen, the amount of loss in two thousand seventeen is actually forty thousand and sixty thousand in two thousand eighteen and nineteen. This is the question. Now, in order to begin the question, as I told you earlier, first of all, as we normally do, what we do, we analyze. So the first step is analysis of accounting period of subsidiary company. So many times, and those among you who have gone through my what we call this consolidation series, which I started, correct earlier for CFR <coughs> analysis of accounting period of subsidiary company. First, I will write the opening date. Opening date thirty first of three two thousand seventeen. You can write or you can simply write one four two thousand seventeen because thirty first of March and one four is considered one and same date in accounts. And thirty first of three two thousand nineteen is the end date. So in between time period is is two years. This is your date of acquisition, and after this date, due after this eight after this date, whatever period is there, we call it during the year period. So this time during the year period is of two years, and entire during the period will be considered as post acquisition period, isn't it or not? Now after that we normally. Compute the degree of control. In order to compute the degree of control, we take the number of share of subsidiary company. Total share capital of subsidiary company happens to be six lakh. Face value of one share is ten. So number of share is sixty thousand. Clearly given that we have acquired forty thousand share, obviously held by outsiders, non-controlling interest holders, or what we call minority interest. You can write minority interest also, twenty thousand. So your degree of control or ratio. Is two is two one two by three or one by three. After this, generally, what we do, we do the analysis of a profit and loss account and general reserve of subsidiary company. And in order to do the analysis, generally, what we do, we simply compare the opening and closing balance. Now, in this question, opening balance is negative. First of all, you need to understand this. And some of you might wonder, wonder sir, where is the opening balance? Because you have a habit of looking into the liability side only. But here, problem is that profit and loss account balance of subsidiary company is given towards the asset side. So towards the asset side means opening balance given, and this is not closing because because generally in the balance sheet closing balances are given. This is closing balance of thirty first of three two thousand seventeen, no doubt about that. But thirty first three two thousand seventeen is the opening date for us, so that is why we are we would consider it as opening balance. So it is a negative balance. You need to understand first of all. So. 
I will write here opening balance of subsidiary company negative 80,000. Unfortunately, subsidiary company even in the current, in the first year, sorry, 17 and 18, or you can say in the current year, because if we have taken opening balance of 1 for 2017, then in 17 and 18, it again earned a loss of 40,000. Again in 18 and 19, it earned a loss of 60,000. So closing balance will become 1,80,000 and negative. If closing balance is negative and opening balance is also negative, so that means whatever profit has been earned from beginning of 1 4 2017 till the end of 31st of 3 2019, it will be considered as during the year profit, and your during the year profit will also be negative. If you will subtract from minus 1 lakh 80,000, minus 80,000, you will get minus 1 lakh. So, this minus 1 lakh will be considered as post acquisition profit. In fact, these are profits earned by subsidiary company from 1 4 2017 till 31st of March 2019. But they are, but these profits are, will be considered as post acquisition because entire length of two years period is related to post acquisition period. So, post acquisition profit will be your negative 1 lakh. Then we come over to the general reserve. Then we normally do the analysis of general reserve or subsidiary company. Fortunately, in the general reserve, in the balance sheet, balance given is 40,000 of subsidiary company. So that is that will be considered as opening balance. And trans and your closing balance is also 40,000. How can you tell me that your closing balance is 40,000? Could any one of you tell me the balance is 40,000? Because this balance is opening balance. So your closing balance is 40,000. But how it is? The reason is that during these two years, subsidiary company, it is clearly given uh, closing balance 40,000 because during these two years, subsidiary company hasn't earned any profits at all. Because we are talking about general reserve balance of subsidiary company. And subsidiary company is having opening general reserve balances 40,000, no doubt. And because subsidiary company during these two years has earned loss, so it cannot transfer anything to general reserve unless and until we would earn profit. Is it possible for us to transfer some amount to general reserve? It is not possible. So that is the reason whatever what we call general reserve was there in the beginning. So transfer during the year is nil. Quite obviously, your closing balance will also be 40,000. So if your closing balance is 40 and opening balance is 40, so no question of any post acquisition general reserve. After analyzing all these things, normally we have a habit of preparing the analysis table and main intention and main target of preparing this table is to actually find out the net equity. Net equity or net assets are one and same thing. Is it clear to you? Net equity on the date of acquisition. So we are trying to find out on the date of acquisition and date of acquisition is 31st of 3, 2017 or 1, 4, 2017. On this date, share capital of subsidiary company is 6 lakh you are going to write. And then I have written here reserve and surplus, reserve and surplus on the date of acquisition. And we have just seen that profit and loss account in the beginning is negative 80,000. Of course, of subsidiary company we have to take. And reserves in the beginning is 40,000. There is no revaluation and there are no other items. So I will total it up. I will get 5,60,000. So 5,60,000 reflects the value of net assets of subsidiary company. Or simply you can say it is the equity. Equity, equity means share capital plus reserves, etc. So equity is always equal to net assets. So Total net assets or equity or subsidiary company on the date of acquisition is 5,60,000. And one third out of it is related to minorities or non-controlling interest holders. So one third amount will be 1,86,667. And two third amount will be equal to 3,73,333. Correct? Then when we prepare this table, we also find, we also try to write here revenue, nature profits or post acquisition profits. In this question, post acquisition profits are there, which we just computed earlier, but those profits were negative. Out of that, share of parent or holding company is 66,667, two third, and share of minority will be equal to 33,333. Now we can we have to find out cost of control. 
in order to find out cost of control we have to see how much price we have paid for the investment that is 6 lakh in the very first point i have explained whatever i have written here correct so 6 lakh is what price paid for investment i have written here through debentures you have acquired 40000 shares of 10 each at 50% premium that is 6 lakh i have written it very clearly and i have explained it also and i have already told you that in order to issue debentures uh, 5000 debenture we will issue so and so important point is that your amount of investment is 6 lakhs but when you will reach the end of the first year remember one thing you have done the investment and when you will reach the end of the first year how much amount you would write it off how much amount you are going to write off you are going to write off 20,000 because each year you have decided to write off 20,000. So 20,000 you have written. I think I have done here a bit of mistake. Not only 20,000 in the first year, but I will. I must have written off 20,000 because two years time period has gone by. Two years. So 20,000 plus 20,000, 40,000 you subtract and your net investment figure will be equal to 5,60,000. 5,60,000. Is it clear to you or not? Because it was, let me actually go through the question, when they have decided, it has been decided to write down investment to the face value of shares in 10 years. Obvious, obviously, 2 years have gone by. So, 20,000 each year, 20,000 each year, I will have to write off. Because 2 lakh divided by 10 is equal to 20,000. Each year, 20,000, 20,000 investment will be written off. But important point, actually, let me also make it clear. I think I have done it correctly. Just wait. Because on the date of acquisition, on the date of acquisition, we have to find out. Please don't forget. Actually, in my mind, only two years period of time is going by. So price paid for investment is 6 lakh. On the date of acquisition, I will... I will write 20,000 because in the first year we have decided that we have to write it off. So 20,000 only you will write off because you are doing the calculation on 31st of 3, 2017 or 1, 2017. So this is correct. No problem. But when you will reach the end of the year, 20,000 more you are going to write off. That's a different matter. So 5,80,000 you will consider as your investment. So that was the reason I thought actually how come I could have committed such a mistake. 5,80,000 is your net investment. And now we have just computed the total amount of equity which was 560 and share of parent is 3,73,333. So we have got, in fact we have paid 5,80,000 on the date of acquisition and whatever net assets of subsidiary company were there, out of that our share is 3,73,333. So, in order to compute the goodwill, we simply compare on the date of acquisition the amount of net investment with the amount of our proportion of net assets of subsidiary company on the date of acquisition. We have already seen that on the date of acquisition, total net assets of subsidiary company is 560 and our share happens to be 3,73,333. So, my goodwill will be equal to 2,6,667. It is matching with the answer given in your suggested. Then, we can compute minority interest or what we call non-controlling interest holder. On the date of acquisition, minority interest will be considered as 1,86,667 because, because so much of assets relate to them. And then, in, then minority will also have some interest in the during the year profit. In during the year profit, unfortunately, we were having a loss. So, one third will belong to minority. So, on the reporting date, that means at the end of the year, I am going to report minority interest at 1,53,334. Is it clear to you or not? This is how we have to solve this question. Then I will have to prepare the balance sheet. So many times I have told you when we prepare the balance sheet, when we write the share capital, only parent share is written. We are going to ignore the share capital of subsidiary company. Actually, we do not ignore it. It is already adjusted. You must have seen that we have taken the share capital of subsidiary company to the analysis table and it has got divided between minority and what we call uh, holding company already. So we do not add it again. Likewise, under the reserve and surplus, I will write consolidated reserves. When we write consolidated reserve, we take the balance of the parent. Now, parent's balance as per balance sheet is 1,20,000. 
And this was the point I was trying to tell you at the time. Out of 1,20,000, first of all, this is the balance. And some amount holding company has transferred from its profit to general reserve during these two years. So you will add 20,000, 20,000 because out of profits amount is transferred to general reserve. So total general reserve at the end of the uh, 31st of 3, 2019 of holding company will be equal to 1,60,000. Again, I'm trying to tell you, we never write reserve in surplus while preparing the consolidated balance sheet of subsidiary company because, sub because subsidiaries companies reserve and surplus and profit and loss account automatically get adjusted as we have already seen. Now profit and loss account, I have already talked a lot about that. First of all, I will look into the balance sheet, look into the look into the column of holding company. It was 80,000. We have already seen, correct? 80,000 was already given to us. And I told you that holding company earned a profit during 17 and 18, 1 lakh 60. Now out of this profit, they transferred 20,000. They must have return of 20,000 also. They must have paid a dividend of 1,5,000 also. So that means as far as 17 and 18 profits of holding company is concerned, net profit will be 15,000. Because out of 160, they have transferred 20,000 to general reserve. They have used 20,000 to write off investment. They have used 1,5,000 for payment of dividend. So net will be 15. Similarly, in 18 and 19, holding company has earned a profit of 2 lakh. Again, out of 2 lakh, they will transfer to general reserve 20,000. 1 lakh 5 to dividend, 20,000 again they will use to write off investment now, correct? So 55,000 they will be left off with. And here, share of loss in post acquisition loss of subsidiary company. It means we have seen that subsidiaries companies during the year profits were 1 lakh. Unfortunately, post acquisition profits of subsidiary company were 1 lakh. And out of that, our share is equal to 2 by 3. So 66,667, it is this item I will subtract. So ultimately the net amount, the net amount, <coughs> I am going to write profit and loss account or consolidated p &L as we call it, that is 83,333. When you, you will write the items of reserve and surplus, we have written general reserve profit and loss account. Don't forget to write security premium because you have issued 5,000 debentures also. And debentures have been issued at a premium of 20. You paid the debentures, correct? <clears throat> 5,000 debentures of ended each at the rate of 120. So security premium will be 1 lakh. Non-controlling interest holder, we have already computed their balance on the reporting date. Under the non-current liability, don't forget to write 8% debentures because you have issued 8% debenture for payment of purchase consideration. Then trade payable simply add you will get. This is how you are going to get the what we call total of liability side. Coming over to fixed asset. Now when I will write the fixed asset, here I, here I have to exercise caution in the sense, whatever fixed asset belong to me, that means holding company, I will subtract the depreciation for the two years here to know their value after the end of two years. So after the end of the two years, fixed tangible fixed asset of holding company is 5,50. Similarly, we will take the what we call tangible fixed asset of our subsidiary company and even subsidiary company has written off 10% depreciation on written down value basis for two years. You will subtract the depreciation for two years here. So the net value will be 162. So by adding these two items, 150 and 162, you will get this item 7,12,000. This is the figure at which tangible fixed asset will be reflected. Then goodwill you have to reflect, which you computed. Investment will not find place, correct? Because investment is already used for the computation of goodwill. Then inventories 3 lakh plus 1 lakh 80, 4 lakh 80, trade receivable you will add. One thing which you need to take care of, I have written here cash and its equivalent. Actually in the balance sheet cash and bank balance is not given. If you look into the balance sheet, no cash bank balance is given. And here I have written balancing figure. We have to take in this question cash and its equivalent as balancing figure. Why? In this question, date of acquisition is 31st 3, 2017 or 1, 4, 2017. While two years further period 17, 18 and 18, 19 is also given. And we are preparing the balance sheet on 31st of 3, 2019. On this date, we do not, we don't have the balance of cash. So it will be taken as balancing figure. So you have to take it as the balancing figure. Is it clear to you or not? So. This is the question I just wanted to, these two questions I wanted to pick up for the day. We will continue with this series 
and I will upload this series, these two papers by 11 a.m. tomorrow in my YouTube channel. I have already uploaded in a S series and shortly you will have the past paper analysis series also on, on Telegram channel. Correct. So on such note, we finish up this particular session. Hope that it must have come up to your expectations. So looking forward to have your feedbacks. And on such note, we finish it off to meet you again tomorrow at 7.30. It's goodbye till then.